Now, the next method that we had uh, discussed is the mist relief. Uh, so, uh, apply, this is applied when mid samples are noticed that the blue line uh, while air drilling. So, you remember the point where uh, we saw that the sample is taken. So, at that point, if you notice that some, sample, uh, some, some of the samples are wet, then you need to switch to mist drilling. Uh, it requires, so this mist drilling will require more air than uh, the basic air drilling, which is about 20 to 30 percent of more air. And uh, it can handle some water influx, but no to medium, uh, well, not, not very high water influx. If you get a lot of water in your samples, then you have to move to another technique. So we have small volumes of water influxes from the formation, then uh, this is, it is possible. Again, uh, mist drilling is also having very high annular velocities, very high velocities in the annulus, and they can cause uh, formation erosion. So what, what is required for mist drilling is uh, another pump, a normal triplex pump is required to be part of the setup uh, to uh, pump water into the line uh, <coughs> along with the air. And your returns are wet. So they are not like how we saw before as dust, but they are now slightly wet because you have no water in the air. So this water will uh, cause uh, uh, wet samples basically to return. And uh, some of the recommendations are that not to circulate uh, for a long in a single spot. Uh, basically to ensure that uh, hole is clean and uh, you may have to increase the air volume and uh, concentration of uh, foaming agent and water depending on the requirement. So this is this comes with experience, judgment and some engineering knowledge. So most of the time the supervisors and uh, service company that come uh, to do this job have a lot of experience in this and they will adjust the parameters to ensure that you don't have any downward complications typically. So uh, this is how it works. Uh, and then you have, a <clears throat> you need to Include corrosion and inhibitor as we have discussed because use of air, air is highly corrosive for the drilling equipment, so it can cause corrosion. Uh, and you need to use corrosion inhibitors uh, as part of your chemicals that you inject. So there is a basically uh, foam drilling is another technique that you need to uh, consider here. And foam has an as I mentioned earlier, foam has an excellent combination of uh, low density and high rheology. And uh, those who are interested in studying this topic in more details can look up on the internet how foam is used in drilling application and uh, essentially it is just a, a very good, it has excellent characteristics where you can get as low, uh, you know, densities as 0. 0.5 to 6 ppg, you know, as low as 0. 0.5, but it has got excellent cutting carrying capacity. So it gives you uh, the best hole cleaning properties and minimizes pressure surge because of liquid and gas, uh, you know, tied together in immersion. Uh, foam returns uh, can be dumped directly to the pit uh, or can be recycled, foam can be recycled as well and low air requirements for big holes. So because of the foam and its cutting carrying capacity and cutting suspension capacity, because of the viscosity now that you have, you will require lower air than normal air drilling. So foam drilling has its uh, significant advantages. And foam drilling can also handle big water influxes. So if you get water influx while you're drilling, foam uh, foam has an excellent uh, uh, you know, hole cleaning capacity. So these water influxes can be handled very well. So this is a typical setup for foam drilling. Now here you see an additional tank of uh, uh, basically a tank and a pump that you need to include in your setup to add as a foaming foam basically. And uh, the same thing that we just discussed, but we have a chemical injection pump here and you have a foam uh, tank where you actually create your water and surfactant and then you add that along with your air uh, so that uh, foam is created. And you inject that uh, at your uh, standpipe manifold or before that, so it gets along, gets into the uh, well, and you know, basically, this is how it looks on the rig side when you have a uh, foam uh, being drilled. If you can see here, you have a, you have your uh, blue line here that will, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically eject all the foam into your waste pit. And this is how the foam is, uh, you know, collected on the rig. This foam can be either recycled or it is wasted, but it is environmentally friendly. So uh, it will, with time, this foam will uh, disintegrate. It is just surfactant and water, basically. So now uh, let's move to the next part, which is the aerated mud drilling. Aerated mud is a slightly different technique. And uh, basically liquid phase, in this, you have got two phases. One is the liquid phase, which is your regular mud, uh, that is oil water-based mud. And uh, basically, you have to use your conventional drilling rig setup with mud pumps and everything that you need to pump this mud. And then you also add air to the standby manifold. So you combine your air and your mud together, and then you pump it into the well, uh, basically to get lower densities. 
So the mud returning to surface uh, basically follows the same loop as a conventional drilling. The airline is connected to the standby manifold and the different drilling procedures and tipping procedures. You need, you need to change your drilling and tipping procedures as compared to conventional drilling because now you have uh, air being added to the, uh, to the system. So it, can, it has got different pressures and pressures need to be released sometime before you start your tipping uh, action. And you, know, you need to probably displace well to higher density fluid before you trip out a hole. So gasified fluid is a better choice. Hole stability is a concern. And uh, basic uh, compared to, I mean, this is gasified fluid is in comparison to your air or foam drilling. And your ECDs and annular velocities are dictated by pump volume of liquids and gases. And you can control your ECD very well in this, this particular method. So bit is dressed with bigger nozzles to avoid high injection pressures. So your, your bit design also needs to change. You can use conventional bit, but the nozzles are of higher size, basically here in this case. So as I again said, the, the drill bit company, the service companies who are uh, providing the services, they're all familiar with this. Uh, all you need to do is engage the discussion with them, get some feasibility study done and perhaps a trial on a, on a particular well to see uh, if this technique is indeed suitable. Here is a typical setup of how it would be. Uh, similar uh, thing, but now here the returns are going to shell shaker. You have your uh, mud pumps. This is the rig, uh, mud pump system pumping mud and your air uh, system coming from uh, the compressors and the boosters and this combined together uh, the returns are now you have a gas mud separator so when the returns come out you need to separate the gas the gas is vented out and the mud is returned to the shale shaker and then to the tank so the mud goes back to the rig tank and is recycled again be used whereas the gas is vented out and you have your gas lying here as, as it is seen to the uh, something that is called as burning pit I mean, this pit has to be at least 45 meters uh, uh, far away from the well bore. So, yeah, this is this is the aerated drilling uh, equipment layout, which is quite commonly used in the Middle East, actually. Uh, let us review one case study. Here is one, one of the well that I was involved with. Uh, it's, 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 uh, for technical reasons, I don't want to put the details on the well, but you can see what, what equipment was used. The normal PDC pit was used to drill a 12 quarter inch whole section. Uh, the drilling, they all, there was also a motor in the VHA. Uh, the size of the motor is 9.5 by 8 inch, and uh, as you can see, nozzles uh, bigger than you know what you normally see. You had jars, you had drill collars, similar roller emerge, similar BHA as you would see normally for conventional drilling. So nothing unusual, nothing uh, extraordinary. Just that you are now here in this case, you are using air along with mud, and you will see how you can get much lower equivalent mud weight in this table. Uh, if you see <clears throat> how the process started, and uh, here you have your flow GPM. Uh, uh, pumping rate for the tunnel control control section. Here you have your air in cubic feet per minute. Now you go on increasing your air, you go on with reducing your uh, fluid rate as you start drilling. And if you had been drilling just with mud, you would have had a equivalent mud density of 8.6 ppg, 8.8 ppg. <clears throat> but with, uh, by adding of air, you were able to get 7 uh, ppg equivalent mud weight. Now the injection pressure is around 2000 psi, nothing unusual, very much within the range. Uh, but you can achieve between 6 to 7 ppg of equivalent mud weight by using this technique. Now, if you are drilling through a zone which has got, which is prone to loss circulation, uh, by reducing the drilling fluid equivalent drilling fluid density, you can uh, mitigate this problem. You can you, you can uh, very well handle, uh, you know, prevent loss circulation. So, instead of experiencing loss circulation and then finding remedial solutions, I have seen that in many cases where people have to set cement plug and then you uh, drill through the cement plug and then after that, Again, uh, because there is a limitation for cement plug, you cannot have more than uh, 250 feet or 300 feet. Uh, cementing company will decide based on, uh, uh, and then you drill through that cement plug, and then you again experience losses because the losses are there. Losses are more than uh, you know that height. So uh, this, this goes on. The cycle goes on. Uh, setting up cement plug, drilling through the cement plug, and you waste several days. So instead, if you use this technique, you may not experience loss circulation. You may drill through that zone. You may run the kissing, and you may cement it, and uh, that's it. So you're done with the section and you continue uh, over drilling the reservoir. You can see how uh, the ROP is significantly higher. And in some cases, you got ROP as high as 196 feet per hour. You know, and uh, an average ROP was, uh, you know, 80, 90, uh, 60. So it's quite high, dramatically high in some cases as compared to conventional drilling. And uh, then you have uh, your weight on weight, which is nothing unusual, slightly higher than uh, what you would normally do, but nothing unusual. Your uh, mud properties are listed here. Again, 
similar to what you would have normally for any drilling water based mud so uh, this is this table is just to give you an idea about what aerated drilling is and what you would normally do you use your compressor your booster uh, to get the air and that is injected along with your fluid in the well in order to achieve lower drilling fluid densities equivalent mud weight and uh, and achieve uh, basically prevent any losses or get higher out so this is precisely what the objective is now what do we need to do before we start uh, uh, the the <clears throat> the actual uh, drilling operation what we need to do hydraulic modeling so let's go back to the previous chart so where are these rates coming from you know cfm why did, how did we start with 450 how did we start with 1000 uh, at a particular depth and how was this increased gradually where did these numbers come from these numbers were decided with the help of hydraulic modeling so what do we do uh, in hydraulic modeling also called as the design of operation. hydraulic modeling is part of the operations design so what do you do you select the drilling fluid you select the equipment now if you are going to need uh let's say 450 cfm or 800 cubic standard cubic feet per minute of air uh, for drilling uh perhaps most of you would know that 900 gpm 1000 gpm how are you going to achieve that you would achieve that using your rigs pump you have got your triplex pumps on the rigs and they would be uh, you know used to drill so this is nothing unusual but you also need to add air to it now so in the operations design you need to select the equipment in order to achieve that air requirement what how many compressors you are going to need what type of boosters you are going to need so in operations design you decide this equipment and also the procedure procedures meaning at what uh, air you would start injection and then how would you gradually increase to uh, the required uh, injection rate at what pressure so these are the things that you would decide in operations in operations design and multi phase hydraulic simulations so now when you do hydraulic simulations in your conventional drilling you have the single phase you just have liquid as your mud here you have liquid and you have air so it's a combination of two so it's multi phase so therefore it is called as multi phase because your fluid system is going to have two or three phases and therefore it is called as multi phase so you need a different type of hydraulic simulation here in order to uh, decide the parameters required to build a particular well or to get the right ec so the hydraulic simulation goals uh, is to design the required variables such as liquid flow rate air rate and to maintain any uh, required to maintain uh, the desired equivalent circulating density or equivalent mud rate. Now, the goals of hydraulic simulation, hydraulic modeling are to achieve uh, uh, basically to ascertain that you have the desired conditions uh, while drilling at all times. ECD is within the range. You have your right ECD available. ECD is uh, basically you have whole cleaning is adequate yeah, and you are within your wind operating window and uh, you are, uh, you would get the right size of equipment that is required to pump the right amount of volume of air and liquids. And other chemicals required, and uh, you, you have the safety margin maintained. One of the criteria for hole cleaning is cutting transportation ratio. So uh, basically, in the aerated mud system, uh, you use uh, something what is called as a cutting transportation ratio. Uh, if you have, uh, and then if the ratio is about uh, 0.7, you uh, you uh, it is adequate for you to uh, you know hole clean your hole. And if it is 0.9, yes, that is for the deviated horizontal wells. So this criteria is used to establish. Uh, whether while you are drilling with a particular combination of liquid flow rate and air, air, you will be able to clean your hole because one thing we need to ensure is the cuttings or the dust or everything that is in the hole is removed. So it doesn't pack up around your BHA and cause any kind of uh, downer complications like stuck pipe no? while you are drilling. So the hole has to be clean and remember that ROPs that you are going to get are very high. So with that high ROPs, your hole has to be clean uh, during this drilling operation. This is a typical example well. And uh, uh, you know you will have a well profile like this. You will have a surface and intermediate casing, and then you have another whole section to be drilled. Uh, uh, then you, you use this as your input for your simulation. This is just an example for you guys to see how you how you typically do it. You draw your diagram. You make sure you put all the inputs like your concasing, your drill pipe, your uh, uh, you know depths for for uh, and your BHA details like your drill collars, your drill pipe, your heavyweight drill pipe, um, all other components in the BHA. So, because they will all have a, an impact on your uh, pressures in the well. And these are the modeling uh, parameters. When you do hydraulic modeling, then you need to see what would be your uh, equivalent mud weight, what specific gravity, what, what are the properties of the mud in terms of viscosity. Uh, basically, you set your criteria that your equivalent density should be between 6 to 7 ppg. Uh, and you, these are the bits that you are going to use, with the nozzles that you just mentioned, and uh, the cuttings. Cuttings density uh, that would normally be there when you uh, when you start drilling, 
uh, injection rates, temperature, what are the what are the expected uh, produced fluids, are there any H2S or CO2 in the well? So these are some of the things that you need to keep in mind while you are, uh, uh, these are the input for your modeling basically. And these are the, these are some of the plots that you generate at the end of the completing modeling. You start with your injection rate uh, and you have your air at 800 CFM and 600 GPM. Basically, like you decide, this is the best combination for drilling 26 inch hole section, for example, uh, with aerated mud. And uh, then here you have another uh, another uh, modeling concentration for another hole size. And here you have decided that your air requirement is 1200 feet per minute and you have this 600 GPM as well for of, uh, water uh, rate, you know. And all other associated parameters after completing the modeling, you can get it over here. And you will uh, basically use that for uh, for your uh, planning process. So once you establish this, then you know how much of uh, air is required and what equipment you would need at surface to achieve that. So this is typically how a surface equipment is. Uh, there is a lot of different type of equipment. This is uh, you know one setup that I wanted to show you here as how it looks like on, on the rig when you have uh, you have some compressors, you have some boosters, nothing unusual. Uh, the service company, in this case it was Weatherford, will bring it to the rig and they will uh, when you see here these, these barrels over here, they are basically those those chemicals that we mentioned. You know, you need a foaming agent, you need uh, corrosion inhibitors, you need uh, basically some pumps and tanks. You know, to inject those. These. And this this thing over here is uh, basically the chart recorder that I mentioned. You know, this will record the uh, flow rate of your uh, injection, uh, basically air. And these are the lines that are then connected to your standpipe manifold. Uh, uh, nothing extraordinary, nothing unusual. It's just that uh, something that you need to discuss and decide on what equipment you need after you complete your flow modeling, and then they will uh, bring it you know, along. And this, this over here is a tool house basically. This, this, this is where you usually prepare your, uh, you know, tools uh, that are required uh, during the operation. So, uh, interesting uh, type of work that uh, it's quite uh, challenging at the same time, exciting. Uh, that you need to uh, get involved with if required, but yes, it does require some upfront planning and engineering to achieve this. Uh, 